Welcome to the Department of Commerce Electronic Certificate of Origin System. In this video, we will be showing users how to apply for a cost statement for your non-holy products. To get started, go ahead and log into your exporter portal. We are now inside the Electronic Certificate of Origin dashboard, where you are given tiles displaying the various functions that can be performed. Before we get started, let's go to My Products by clicking on the top right button. We are directed to the My Products table, where you can see a list of your products along with their product names, category, and whether there's an associated cost statement or an affidavit. If you take a look at the first column of our table, you can see that products are ordered as HS code, agreement, destination country, and if available, style and price. There can be instances where the same product is exported to multiple countries using multiple agreements. For example, within this table, our product paper is exported to Maldives through SAPTA and to Bangladesh through SAPTA, which is denoted as two separate rows. With this information in mind, let's go back to our dashboard to get started with adding a cost statement. First, we will go ahead and add the products we are trying to export. So click on the top leftmost tile, Add Product. This is our Add Product screen. Here we will enter our product details. Let me go ahead and type in IHS code. Give a product name. For this demonstration, I will be choosing Woven Jackets to be my product name. Select a destination, which is going to be India, and an agreement, the ISFTA. And now we will select a product category. Since we are talking about cost statements, it will be a non-holy product. If you choose holy products, then affidavits are the relevant documentation required for it. We have a separate video explaining how to apply for affidavit. And now we are given a bunch of subcategories to choose from. And based on what subcategory is selected, you are required to upload relevant documentation pertaining to that product subcategory. For example, if I choose timber and furniture as my product subcategory, I will be prompted to upload timber corporation certificate and any other documentation. If I choose tea instead, I am prompted to upload a tea board certificate as an exporter. If I choose edible fish processed, I will now have to upload a registration certificate, agreement and any other relevant documentation. But for the purpose of this demonstration, since I have chosen woven jackets, let me go ahead and select other. And now I'm not prompted for any special document upload. Now I can go ahead and enter a product style and price as optional fields. If we do enter these, they will appear in our product description as well. Now I can also add a description as an optional field. Now let's go ahead and click save product. I will now be prompted asking if I want to export this same product to multiple countries using different agreements. For the purpose of this demonstration, I will go ahead and choose Pakistan as another country I want to export this product to and select the PSFTA as the agreement. You can go ahead and add many more if your product is sent to other countries, but for this demonstration, I will stop here and click on finish. Now going to the My Products table, you can see the product we have just added, and it has two rows to it due to the difference in destination and relevant agreement. And the table is now giving me a prompt asking me to apply for a cost statement. Let me go ahead and click this button. It is now prompting me, asking me if I have a Department of Commerce issued cost statement. If you do, go ahead and click yes. Since I clicked yes, it is now prompting me for a cost statement approved date, which I will now enter. And then I will click on the upload button to upload a Department of Commerce approved cost statement. It is recommended that you password protect your PDF before sending it to the Department of Commerce, as it is it will ensure the safety of your information. Also a reminder to send your password information to the Department of Commerce as they will need it to access your cost statement. Now go ahead and click the checkbox where you agree to the fact that you have taken the responsibility to att attach a cost statement that is password protected. And then go ahead and click the next checkbox where you agree to the fact that the uploaded cost statement 
is in correspondence with your pre-approved cost statement and any willful misinformation will result in the cancellation of your account. Once both these are checked, as you can see, the submit button will appear, which I will now click. It gives me a prompt on the top saying the cost statement has been successfully submitted. Now, as you can see, since this is a pre-approved cost statement, the status of the cost statement of the product says approved. And at the bottom, it gives you the expiration date for your cost statement. When this document expires, the green approved button will change to reapply. So you can reapply for your cost statement from my products table itself without any kind of hassle. Now for the purpose of this demonstration, I will also show what the process will look like if you do not have a Department of Commerce approved cost statement. So let me go ahead and choose the second product we added, which is the same product being exported to a different destination with a different agreement and click on apply. Now this time around, I will say that I do not have an approved cost statement by choosing no. And now I am prompted to submit the relevant documentation to get my cost statement approved by the Department of Commerce. So I am prompted to upload my cost statement, which will once again be password protected, as well as an imported raw material invoices with Custix and a local raw material invoices. Once these are uploaded, go ahead and click the checkbox, once again taking responsibility that the attached cost statement is in fact password protected. This will once again cause the submit button to appear. The prompt on the top states that the cost statements have been successfully submitted. And looking at my products table, as you can see, the button for this particular product states submitted instead of approved. This is because your cost statement and its relevant documentation has now been sent for checking and approval to the Department of Commerce. And once they give their approval or the rejection, that status of that button will change. And now let us click on the status button on top, which will give you the option to view active, expired and disabled cost statements or view all the cost statements you have. And now let us take a look at the more button and the various options it provides to you. As you can see, the more button will only appear once your documents are approved. Clicking on the more button will give me a prompt to expire your cost statement or disable it. You may want to expire your cost statement if some of the information within your cost statement has changed. For an example, the price changes due to exchange rates. Then you can go ahead and expire this cost statement and reapply with the new information provided. So let me go ahead and do just that for this demonstration purpose. And now going to the status button and selecting expired, you can see that the cost statement you have just expired has now appeared. It will now give you a prompt to reapply with the updated information. Clicking on that will direct you to the same process as before with regards to applying to a cost statement where it will prompt you to whether you have a DOC approved cost statement or not this process will be identical. Now let's go back to my products table by selecting all, and I will now go to more and choose disable your product. Choosing to disable a product will cause that product to deactivate. You can do these for products that are not being currently exported by you. Now going back to the status bar and clicking on disable, you can now see the product you have just disabled. You can go ahead and reactivate it by clicking on more and hitting the enable product button. Now that the more options are covered, let me go ahead and skip ahead in time to show you what the Department of Commerce approval and rejection of a cost statement will look like for your woven jacket product. Now that a certain time has passed, officers at the DOC have processed my cost statement and given me their decision. As you can see, once DOC attends to your cost statement, you will receive an email such as this, which will specify whether your cost statement has been approved or rejected. Going through this email, as you can see, your cost statement has been successfully approved. You can find the associated details regarding your product in the email body, including the approved criteria. Now let's go ahead and click the login button. This will direct me to the electronic certificate of origin login page. Now that a certain time has passed, officers at the DOC have processed my cost statement. DOC. 
Now that a certain time has passed, officers at the DOC have processed my car statement and given me their decision. As you can see, once DOC attends to your car statement, you will receive an email such as this, which will specify whether your car statement has been approved or rejected. Going through this email, as you can see, your car statement has been successfully approved. To demonstrate this, let me go ahead and reapply to this woven jacket's car statement that I ended up expiring using the more option. When I am prompted if I have a DOC approved cost statement, I will select no, and now let me go ahead and upload the necessary documentation. With that done, the status of this cost statement has changed to submitted and the documents are once again sent to the DOC for checking an approval or rejection. Let me go ahead and skip ahead in time once again to show you what a rejected cost statement would look like. Your rejection email will look like this. As you can see, it states that your product has been rejected. We are given the details of which product it is. In this case, it was our woven jackets for India through the ISFTA and they have provided us the reason for rejection, which in this case seems to be an invalid document upload. It seems I have uploaded the wrong document when submitting the local raw material invoices. Let me go ahead and log into the electronic certificate of origin system once again. Going to the My Products table, as you can see, a blue reapply button has appeared for our product. Let's go ahead and click it. This directs me to the resubmission screen. Within the resubmission screen, we can clearly see the reason for our rejection, which was written to us by an officer of the Department of Commerce. Something that is worth noting is that the resubmission screen will make your life much easier, as you only have to submit the rejected document in the resubmission process and depending on which document of yours got rejected, you will see a different upload prompt. For example, if your imported raw material invoices got rejected instead, you will see a prompt to that particular document upload. If both your raw material invoices as well as your local raw material invoices got rejected, you will see two upload prompts instead. Now let me go ahead and upload the, upload the corrected local raw material invoices document. I will also write a small note for the officer of the DOC to see. Now I will hit submit and this concludes my resubmission process. Your corrected documents are sent to the Department of Commerce for checking and approval and you will receive an updated response regarding your cost statement status once the Department of Commerce finishes their approval process. This concludes the application process for a cost statement. Please do continue watching this tutorial series as we will be explaining the application process for an affidavit in the next video. Thank you for watching.